Hi, Dr. Frank Wynn with Integrity Chiropractic. In this video, I'm gonna take you through a review of the Advantage 2 Ergonomic Keyboard by Kinesis. With working from home becoming the norm for many tech professionals now, I think it makes sense to take a look and see what are some things we can do to make it more comfortable on your body. So I'm gonna unbox this guy. I'm gonna take you through my thoughts as uh, someone who treats neuromusculoskeletal issues all day and as someone who used to be a tech professional as well. So quick disclaimer, uh, I wasn't paid uh, for this. I just happened to find this out there when I was searching on the internet and their design caught my eye. I ponied up my own money to buy this and uh, hopefully provide you with some useful information. So with that, let's go ahead and get going. Okay, so here we go. I got my keyboard off of Amazon. Right now, their store happens to be closed, so they're not shipping uh, directly out of there. It's kind of cool. They're a local company in Bothell, Washington, which is always nice to see, uh, you know, tech stuff coming out of the Seattle area. Um, so what I normally use right now uh, is a Logitech uh, Bluetooth keyboard, which works just fine. I'm not using it for many hours uh, a day. So it's not too big of an impact on my body. So here we go, we're gonna open this up. So pretty, pretty nondescript, uh, kind of your OEM packaging. So we got a quick start guide here. So I'm gonna take a look at this. Okay, so it says go ahead and just plug this into our USB port uh, and a device installation notice will appear on our screen. Uh, and I guess it'll take me through a process and uh, set things up. It looks like it has a special program that lets you customize your keyboard layout and settings. So this looks pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't think I'm probably gonna tweak it too much. So let's go ahead and start taking everything out. Uh, so we got this bag here. Uh, it got some extra keys. Looks like you got a Windows key and all option key. I'm not sure what this little circular ring is here, but I'm sure I'll find out in a little bit. So I just took the packaging house around this and I set it on the ground. So kind of first thoughts, this thing's a little bit bigger than your typical keyboards. What kind of caught my attention on the internet when I was looking at it was I was kind of interested in finding a keyboard that was kind of split uh, in its design. Uh, the reason for that is the keyboard that we use these days was obviously kind of made to suit the typewriter because you know that's just the way it was back then. It was just one piece of machinery, uh, and when you hit the keys, it would it moved a little letter and come up and type. But you know now we don't have typewriters anymore, and so you know why do we why do we still use that design? Um, it just doesn't make sense anymore. And so the reason why I like this when I saw it right away uh, was that it kind of opens up. Uh, your hands, which to me, you know, is attractive because a lot of people come in here with tight shoulder and tight pectoral muscles, um, and having this type of design helps to put you in a more natural uh, position with your shoulders open. Uh, also, too, uh, you know, with your wrist being straight on this keyboard, you know, ideally that should lead to less wear and tear, uh, you know, in the tendons in your wrists, and also it should help. Uh, with blood circulation because you're not uh, in all sort of weird angles or whatnot when you're typing. Looks like in this package too, uh, there's also a couple little foam pads. Uh, I imagine they probably are to stick on the bottom uh, or maybe uh, to go right here for my wrists. I'll find out. Okay, so I went ahead and I plugged this keyboard into my Chromebook. Um, and so I'll need to log in and fire this computer up to see what happens next. Uh, I think first impressions um, looking at this is, wow, um, kind of some things that you're used to, uh, you're, you're definitely going to have to make some adjustments. Uh, I think right away, um, you know, for example, the backspace uh, and delete, uh, I'm so used to that being over here on the right side of the standard keyboard, uh, but they've turned it into a, a thumb key. Uh, so you got backspace, delete, and you got your control alt. Uh, home and end, um, you know, I use these pretty infrequently. Page up, page down, it's on the right thumb. Those I use pretty frequently. They got the Windows key set up right there. Um, then you got another control. Uh, and then it's no more space bar. Uh, it looks like enter and space are right next to each other. So kind of kind of interesting. Um, you know, there's certain habits that, you know, we've probably developed from typing on the normal keyboard, a lot of backspace, space, 
Uh, but now these are kind of where your thumb is, so you're going to have to make some adjustments uh, right away. So looking at the keys, you can see they're kind of in an inset bowl layout. I think that's going to take some time to get used to. Uh, you're used to everything being kind of flat, um, and you don't kind of have this change in topography on the keyboard. Uh, and now, you know, having having different levels for everything, um, you know, that's going to be a little bit of an adjustment. You know, just looking at it, it probably it probably means you're going to have to get really good at using, uh, you know, your your specific finger. Uh, you know, to type for specific things, which, you know, if you've been typing for a long time already, um, you know, it's something you do anyways, but I think, uh, you know, we all have our little uh, nuances in how we go about handling uh, how we type and whatnot. Uh, I, I think for me, uh, I, I memorize where all the letters are uh, without, you know, much conscious effort, but I think, you know, sometimes when I need to go to the symbols or numbers, um, you know, I'll still need to, to look at those. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log into my computer um, and we're going to see, see what happens. So my first thoughts, just typing in my password, uh, it felt like a very, very foreign experience to me. You know, not, normally I don't have to think much about where I want to type, I just boom, boom, boom and, and get my password out. But um, with the way it's laid out here um, and kind of where everything is, I'm going to say there's definitely going to be uh, a learning curve to adjust to this. Uh, and what I'll do later is I'll do kind of a type test comparison so you can kind of see the difference in, in speed, um, you know, compared to what I use on my normal keyboard versus uh, this. And you can kind of gauge for yourself kind of what, what kind of learning curve uh, you got up against you. So anyways, um, it's plugged in. Um, I don't know. If maybe for the Chrome, uh, there's no automated, you know, driver download or whatnot. So I imagine probably on the Windows, uh, when you fire it up, that it's going to give you a prompt to install some drivers and uh, some software to let you program this. Um, you know, I'm I'm a QWERTY user. You know, some people might use Dvorak. And it looks like you know, looking at the keys here, they probably have some you know different settings for you know whether you're a Mac or a PC user as well. So um, I'm just going to. Glance back over into this quick start guide really quick. And so, uh, yep, here they are kind of telling you, uh, you know, the, the difference between QWERTY and the Dvorak uh, layout. And so, oh, that's what this little ring tool that came with the keyboard is for. Basically, this will help you pop the keys off so you can rearrange it. This right side here, this is describing um, how to essentially go through their smart set programming engine uh, to kind of remap your keys. And so um, that didn't happen on my little Chromebook here. So I'm just going to assume it's working in the standard mode, uh, QWERTY. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to try it out. So before I put these keyboards through a typing test to see what it feels like to use them, uh, I wanted to put, put them side by side so you can get a comparison of the standard keyboard versus kind of what the Advantage 2 is doing. Uh, so as I already mentioned, a lot of these uh, support keys um, that are around here, as well as this backspace, delete, that's kind of been moved off uh, into this thumb area here. So that's immediately going to pose uh, you know, a big difference uh, to you. Um, also, one thing I didn't mention earlier was that the 10 key has been integrated uh, into this right side of the keyboard. Uh, I imagine it's probably a, a toggle switch, uh, probably that one right there, a keypad to be able to switch between the 10 key mode and typing with the letters mode. Um, and so I don't know yet if that's going to need a driver install on the Chrome that I'm using, um, but we'll figure that out shortly. Uh, another big difference is these arrow keys. Um, you know, I. I'm a big fan of them. I like using them to do little minor tweaks when I'm doing uh, web page edits or uh, moving stuff around in PowerPoint. Um, you know, those those aren't there. They're now kind of looks like they're integrated uh, in here as well, and also on the left side. So that's that's another thing you'll have to get used to uh, as well. Let me go through kind of their their motivations for these this design here. Um, they basically have it on, laid out on their page, but uh, they kind of talk about it, you know, the problem and, you know, what the solution is that the keyboard provides. So 
Uh, first one that they talk about is kind of ulnar deviation. Like, what is that? So basically, ulnar deviation means your wrist is kind of turned outward uh, to your ulna bone. And so what they're saying here is this is a problem, you know, for people with broader shoulders. Um, and so what happens is for you to be able to type uh, comfortably uh, on this keyboard, you'll have to kind of put that kink in your wrist there. And so, you know, putting that kink in your wrist, that might, you know, lead to more friction, uh, compression, uh, which might lead to numbness uh, or tingling uh, or even, you know, blood circulation loss. Um, you know, also too, you know, with the kind of prolonged position that you have to keep the hand in, it probably doesn't help uh, over, you know, a long time uh, and makes, makes your forearm uh, very, very tired. And so kind of what attracted me, obviously, to this keyboard was, um, you know, the keys are split apart, so you don't have to uh, do that to be able to type straight. Um, and, you know, it's already split apart, so you can kind of keep your, your hands comfortable. Um, the other reason why, you know, I, I like this split design as well, too, is um, when you have to internally rotate um, your shoulders to be able to type on this keyboard, it kind of drives a lot of neurological tightness uh, in the front of your shoulder, meaning that your pecs uh, in the front of your shoulders can often become really tight, um, and your rotator cuff uh, in the back uh, of your shoulder can become a little bit, you know, underutilized and maybe weaker. And so uh, for people with shoulder problems, you know, I think it's probably good, too, to be able to type in a more neutral position where your shoulder's opening. So um, that's their solution to deal with kind of that, deviation in the, the hands um, and shoulders. Uh, the second kind of selling point that they're making um, is called forearm pronation. So basically forearm pronation is um, the swiveling action of your forearm. Basically when you're turning palm down and then supination is kind of palm up. And so basically in the traditional keyboard, uh, you have to basically pronate down to be able to reach the keys. And so what they're doing in this keyboard is they're tenting it a little bit. So you're in a little bit more of a neutral position. Um, and so because of that, um, that will take some pressure off your your forearm muscles as well. Um, and actually makes it more a little bit more comfortable uh, for you over time. Um, the other Next point that they're bringing up is um, wrist extension. With the traditional keyboard, um, usually when you reach out to type, type on the keys, you have to uh, extend your wrist up. And so when you're doing that, it obviously puts another kink uh, in your wrist and creates you know, more friction for the tendons, but it also puts um, you know, pressure into your you know, median nerve. Um, and so you know, for people with carpal tunnel syndrome or whatnot, uh, or you know, some sort of similar type symptoms, um, you know, trying to keep your wrists a little bit more neutral. So like all your tendons, all your nerves going through there, um, and as well as your, you know, blood, blood supply, you know, if it's all straight and neutral, um, you yeah, know, it should be more comfortable for you over time as opposed to, you know, keeping it bent at all times. And so, uh, with this one, uh, the keyboard kind of rises up a little bit. So it has a, a, a little bit of a natural wrist, um, elevation there. Um, and the way that these keys are positioned, um, you know, you're basically dropping your fingers down into the bowl uh, as opposed to having to, you know, lift your fingers up to be able to type the keys. And so that will remove that, that wrist bend there. Um, the next, next point that they're making is uh, mouse overreach. And, um, you know, I don't know if maybe, you know, with this keyboard, uh, it's, it's a good comparison, but um, kind of what they're showing here is, you know, with the more fancier type of standard keyboard, sometimes this 10 key is out really far. And so because of that, you know, your mouse is going to be even out, uh, even more out further. And so because of that, you're going to have to reach further, uh, to use it. And so, um, they're suggesting, uh, that kind of that induces extra, you know, strain and, you know, wear on the right side, uh, with you having to do that. Um, you know, so maybe against this keyboard, uh, this 10 key being integrated uh, into this right side isn't as uh, strong of a, a selling point. Um, the last point they make is, uh, you know, high force and fingertip uh, impact. So uh, I think that's, that's where kind of the design um, of the keys, uh, the, the pressure that it requires for you to, to register um, 
we'll find out with the typing test, you know, whether, whether or not, you know, it's more comfortable, you know, me personally, um, I tend to like a, a keyboard with a, with a little bit more feedback. Um, you know, some of these newer keyboards are very, very soft. Um, and it doesn't take much sometimes to get it to register. Um, but I think, you know, having a good balance between, um, you know, the heaviness and feedback, uh, as well as the amount, the amount of force it requires to push it down, uh, is really, really important. They're kind of trying to sell this, um, this keyboard is having a linear feel and a reduced noise when you type. Okay, so we're now gonna go ahead and start a typing test here to be able to compare the differences between the two keyboards so you can get a sense of uh, the learning curve you'll be up against. Um, I'm gonna start with the standard keyboard. Uh, I'm gonna do a one minute test here on this typingtest.com. Uh, so obviously there'll be a little bit of pressure here, but you know, I'm just gonna try to take it easy and uh, try to type as best as I can here. So we're gonna go ahead and click start and I'll probably fast forward through this so you don't have to watch it. Okay, so I did first run, uh, 87 words per minute, made one mistyped word. I definitely did a lot of backspaces, some fast, but I make mistakes, but I correct fast. So anyways, 86 uh, words per minute with the standard. Um, so okay, we're gonna now go ahead and trade keyboards and see what interesting results we get with the Advantage 2. So um, let's go ahead and restart it. Typing test, okay, here we go, one minute test again. Wow, I feel like I am five years old uh, again. So uh, clearly, clearly uh, this, this keyboard is gonna pose some challenges um, you know, to, to someone who's switching from the traditional one. Um, and so you probably wanna take some time to just get familiar with it. Um, but I can say, um, so the motor patterns that you're used to firing up to get to the keys that you want to just aren't gonna work uh, anymore. Uh, and so you're gonna have to make some adjustments. So uh, what I'm gonna do is um, I am going to spend some time using this keyboard to give it a fair shake. Uh, so I'm gonna spend the next couple of weeks uh, using it and then I'm gonna redo this um, and just to get a better sense of things. Um, you know, obviously to go from what you're used to to something completely new, um, you know, there's, there's no way you can expect, um, you know, performance to be, you know, similar at all. Um, and also just um, using it uh, longer will be able to let me have some better feedback for you. But um, I can just say kind of like typing on the keys, they, they feel okay. They feel, they feel comfortable. Um, I don't know if I necessarily feel a, a huge difference uh, between um, the key pressure they have um, here on this keyboard versus kind of what the other one was um, maybe this one's you know slightly clackier, uh, which which I actually I actually like more. The newer keyboards you know don't kind of have this feel. Uh, but anyways, uh, one of, one of the big big challenges I noticed with this one was um, you know as I made mistakes I didn't know where the backspace was it, even though it was right under my thumb. Um, so kind of my habit was to want to continue to go back and, and hit this backspace there. Um, and also you know I didn't know where the the comma was and so. I'm gonna spend some time uh, and kind of get used to this and then kind of compare uh, and see kind of what kind of progress I make in a, in a couple weeks. Uh, and then I'll kind of give you the rest of my feedback uh, for this keyboard. Okay, so we're back after a couple of weeks of me testing this keyboard. I got a ton of notes that I took uh, along this whole process. Uh, so, you know, as I said, I wanted to give it a couple weeks to give this thing a fair shake. Uh, what I did was I actually used this um, you know, almost every day for 20 to 30 minutes using various typing tests. And I wrote down what my experience was uh, for each, each of these days that I used it. Um, I won't tell you all of it, uh, but what I do have is in the description below, I'll put kind of my day by day uh, experience with it. And I'll also link to my blog if you want to read that in more detail. Um, but really quick, uh, earlier when I first opened this keyboard, I just want to confirm, you know, these pads here are indeed uh, for the wrist, uh, for you to rest on. Uh, and also, 
uh, from this quick start guide, it was implied that uh, when you plug it into a Windows computer that you know maybe something would load up. Uh, it turns out it didn't happen for me, but I downloaded their application. Uh, and I found out that you know there's a set of keys that I can pretty much toggle uh, that will get Windows to detect uh, the onboard uh, memory drive that it has. Uh, and inside there is actually um, a, a smart application that let you remap the keys uh, to what you want. Um, in my particular case, uh, I remapped backspace dash shift and space to better serve my needs, but you could pretty much do whatever you want. Um, and there's also some macro capabilities uh, as well too that you can program. Um, as far as typing goes, you know, in this two week period, I went from 33 words per minute to 60 words per minute um, doing various, various tests. I have no doubt that if I spent more time using this, uh, if I spent more time each day, uh, that I would be better, and I have no doubt that it will continue to get better if I do keep using it. Um, the reason why it's difficult uh, with this keyboard, the reason why I got this learning curve is because the same finger that's responsible for hitting the same letter on the conventional keyboard, um, it's not always going to feel like where it is in this keyboard because uh, the keys have essentially been put into columns and there's also tenting uh, as well, as I mentioned when we first opened. Um, and so a lot of us have habituated motor patterns where you know, we'll kind of reach for a letter uh, where we expect it to be, but it may not necessarily be the case on this keyboard anymore, uh, even though the same finger is responsible for it. So you'll have to kind of relearn you know, where that key is. Um, you know, in the advantage, you know, for me, this was really evident in the C, V, and B keys. Um, and so you know, usually, you know, when I'm typing, I'll use my first first finger to, to hit all these. Um, but you know, in this one, uh, not any not any more. The C is pretty much dedicated to the third finger, uh, and the B and the B is dedicated to the second finger. So uh, there's also a little bit of difficulty as well because I tend to break home key uh, convention. Uh, for example, the Q and the P. You know, I will often like to kind of reach up and hit it with my fourth finger because I feel like the pinky doesn't have enough uh, leverage to hit. Uh, but in this keyboard, you kind of have no choice. You kind of have to learn to do that. Um, and so, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it, it may just make you a better typer uh, on the conventional keyboard as well. So as far as productivity and doing more technical things goes, uh, having the control alt and delete keys now being you know managed um, by your thumb uh, is, is a little bit harder to get used to um, there's an empty space below the shift here where I felt like they could have kept the control uh, and it would have been just fine and I would have been able to kind of keep those you know, shortcut keys that we're all accustomed to using um, you know accessible and easy um, you know, usually when you're using those shortcuts, you're not typing fast, but you're just doing little edits and cleanup uh, on your document, you know, which, which for me is also a nice thing to have because I don't want to be confined to uh, a typing position all day, you know, even if it is a better position for me. Um, I also miss having the grouped arrow keys uh, and the 10 key uh, being independent. In this one, they've integrated the 10 key with the letters, which I, know I find very confusing and a little harder. Uh, I think there's enough real estate here that you know they could have just put it here, uh, and although it may take you out of uh, you know a more ideal position for typing, you're probably not using those as often, uh, so it's it's okay. And I think it helps to break up the monotony uh, as well as being in this position all all the time. So you know, is this thing worth the $300 price tag? Uh, you know, as I've gotten better at using this keyboard, I was able to notice and appreciate. Uh, more what it was doing uh, for my wrists by keeping them neutral and I could definitely feel uh, the subtle difference in comfort with my tendons in my wrist having not being bent you know to one side or extended so you know I'll say if you're in to your career and you aren't really having a lot of shoulder or upper extremity issues and you're not using the keyboard for like three hours or more a day um, I would say this this is probably not going to be worth it for you because the time it takes for you to become accustomed to it, um, you know, as well as the amount of exposure, um, injury exposure that you have to using it is just not there. Um, but if you're typing for several 
hours a day uh, writing articles, manuscripts, technical documents, uh, or emailing all day at work uh, and feel like it's maybe starting to affect you a little bit in the upper extremity or shoulders, um, you know, this, this keyboard's probably worth it and, um, you know, it'll probably pay for itself if it can spare you from some discomfort and maybe even keep you, you know, out of offices like mine um, more or at all. So if you're doing something technical, uh, such as software development, uh, the Advantage 2 has the ability to do some macro programming, as I mentioned, uh, which I haven't explored a ton, but you know that could speed up a lot of repetitive things that you may be typing. So Kinesis does have another model keyboard that they sell called the Freestyle and Freestyle Pro. I'll flash a picture of it there so you can see it. This keyboard model is half the cost of the Advantage 2. Uh, and its design is more similar to a conventional keyboard, but it's kind of broken into two halves. Um, so the learning curve will be less for you because everything uh, for the most part is going to be where you expect it to be. Uh, it also has uh, three different levels of tenting, uh, which lets you have some control over it and um, it's not as aggressive, I imagine. So that is also probably makes it um, easier to adapt to, um, especially if you're already established in your career. Another nice thing about the Freestyle Freestyle Pro uh, is that they actually have our favorite uh, shortcut commands uh, it's made as keys, uh, so it's easy for you to just kind of access those. As I mentioned earlier, and this advantage to the the control is not there next to a lot of where our uh, favorites are, like Control C, Control X, uh, and so it's a little more cumbersome to use those there. So uh, you know, if you're not quite sure if you're ready to go with such a big investment here, uh, definitely that can be a good first step. Lastly, if you're a parent and you have a child that's typing a lot, then this could be a good investment to help them uh, hopefully mitigate some of the issues that might come with typing a lot. Uh, but I would still have them kind of practice on a conventional keyboard as well because you just never know when you'll run into it. It's good to be able to use both. So thank you for watching and happy typing, everyone.